Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ray and welcome back to our beginner OpenGL and GL Kit video tutorial series. In this part of the series, we're going to focus on some refactoring optimizations, in particular vertex array objects and introducing a model class. Here's what the app will look like when you finish this part of the series. As you can see, it looks exactly the same as it did in the previous part of the series. So we're really going to be focusing on just refactoring and optimizations in this part of the series. If this is something you don't really care about and you just want to keep moving forward with new material, feel free to skip this part of the series and maybe just look at the sample projects at the end. But if you do care about finding out more about what's going on with these refactorings and why they're important, keep on watching. Without vertex array objects, we have a one-time setup where we create our vertex buffer objects. We also have some code that takes our attributes and binds them to IDs. Then for each draw, we have to bind our vertex buffer objects to be active, you know, the vertex buffer and the element array buffer. And then for each vertex attribute, we have to enable it and tell OpenGL where to find the data inside the array. So in other words, our draw routine has a fair bit of code just to get something rendering. And we have to repeat that every draw. However, if we use vertex array objects instead, a lot of that code that used to be inside the draw method is now moved up to the one-time setup phase. So now we create and bind vertex array objects. And while a vertex array object is active, we can do that initial setup code and it's associated with the vertex array object. And so when it becomes time to draw, we bind the vertex array object and that has the equivalent of binding the corresponding vertex arrays, enabling the corresponding vertex attributes, etc. So it's a lot simpler setup code. We have a project here we left it off last time to rendering a colored square to the screen. The problem with it though is that we have a lot of setup code here. We have to enable these vertex attributes and bind the buffers, and the more attributes we get, the longer this code gets. Plus it's not very efficient either. So let's use the power of vertex array attributes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy these lines to enable the vertex arrays. I'm gonna paste them up here, we're generating the buffers. Let's just put a comment here as well. What we need to use to do to create vertex array objects is first we need a variable for it. And just like most things, first you have to create an object and then you have to bind it to be active. So here we generate one vertex array object and then we bind it to be active. And now everything we do here, when, it, when we bind a buffer here or here, uh, bind an index buffer there or enable the vertex arrays, because we have bound this vertex array, they are gonna be associated to this vertex array object. And then when we're done, we just bind everything back to zero. So now down here in prepare to draw, I can delete this stuff right here. And all I have to do is one line. I just bind the vertex array. And then when we're done after drawing, I bind everything back to zero. So by binding this vertex array, it sets up everything the same way that it was set up here. It, it, it binds the vertex buffer, the index buffer, and the vertex attributes. So let's run it. And we still get the colored square, but our draw code is now a lot more clean. The next refactoring we're gonna do is sort of the bigger one, and it's to refactor the code to use a model class. Right now we have our code to draw our model, which our model is just a box right now, uh, right inside our view controller. And that's not great because if we wanted to have more than one box, our code would start getting messy. And if we wanted to have a lot of different things we're rendering, our code would get even worse. So what is really a better practice is to have all of the code necessary to render a model into a separate class that we then have our view controller contain whatever models it's supposed to render. This is actually the first step toward a scene graph, which a scene graph is like a hierarchy or a tree of nodes, and nodes can have children nodes and so on, uh, that's commonly used to make 3D apps or games. And uh, it will set us up for moving to that later on. We have our project here where we left it off, same as before, except the problem is right now, the setup vertex buffer code has all of this code to generate some indices and vertices and set up the buffers and attributes and then render that object, and it's all hard-coded inside this view controller, and it's starting to get a lot of code that's not related to what the view controller should be doing here. The view controller should just have some basic code and let the models be responsible for the models. So let's create a class to hold all this code. I'm going to select iOS Cocoa Touch Objective-C class. We're gonna call it RWT model, 
and it's going to derive from NS object. Okay, we're going to need the vertex in this class, so let's just import RWT vertex. Oops, I meant to be in the header file here. Let me go back to the header file. So we're going to need a property for the shader as well. We need to pre-declare that to make the compiler happy. And next we need an initializer. It'll take a name, we'll be using that later. It'll also use a shader. And then we'll allow it to pass in the vertices. So the vertices will be an array of RWT vertex. And we'll also need to know the count of vertices. We'll also need to know the indices, which is going to be an array of GLU bytes, and the index count. We'll also need a method to render this model. So let's switch over to the implementation, and I'll paste in this initializer here. So first we're going to need to import RWT base effect, and we're going to need a bunch of different instance variables here. Now inside our initializer, First thing we'll do is it will initialize any passed in variables. All right, now the rest of the code is the code to set up the vertex array object, the index buffer, the uh, vertex buffer, and bind the attributes. And we've actually already written all that code. So rather than reinvent the wheel, let's just go over here and copy all this code over. Oops, I misspelled index buffer right there. Okay, so just to review, we generate the vertex attribute array, generate and bind the vertex and index buffer, and enable uh, the two arrays, the vertex attributes there. And that's it for the initializer. Now we have the render routine. And guess what, we've actually already written that too. So I just have to scroll down here and we don't want the clear bit because that's, you know, the view controller clears itself and then it draws all the models, but we do want the rest of it. And that's really it. So most of it was already code we've already written. We've just basically pulled it over to a different class. Now the last step we need is we want to create a subclass of RWT model for the square so that the square class can hold all the vertices and then just call this with all of its vertices. So to show you what I mean, create another new file. It's going to be called RWT square and subclass RWT model. And I've been square. Its initializer will only take the shader that it should be using. Um, next, I need to store the vertices and indices in here. So let's go and copy them out of here and paste them back in as global variables. And now, instead of calling just plain init, I, I want to call this one here. So the shader is going to be the shaders passed in. The vertices will be that vertices array. Now, for the vertex count, I'm going to use that trick where it's the size of vertices divided by size of vertices 0. And then the rest the same for indices. I just have to do a little casting to make the compiler happy. Okay, so we have all the pieces in place now to clean up our view controller. So going back to rwtviewcontroller.m, I'm going to go ahead and import rwt square. And I can delete everything in here except for the shader and replace it with the rwt square. And I can delete this entire setup vertex buffer method. And we'll rename setup shader to setup scene. And so in addition to creating the shader, we'll set up the square. And then finally, down here, all we have to do is call render on the square. So as you can see, look how short our view controller is. It's nice and concise now. There's one last thing I forgot to say. Since we paste in this code, there is one thing we have to change. We can't use size of vertices anymore. Now we have to use vertex count times size of RWT vertex. And similarly, we can't use size of indices. We have to use index count times size of GLU byte. Now if we run that, it's working again, but we have a much cleaner code.
All right, that's it for this video tutorial, and as always, we want to leave you off with a challenge. Your challenge this time is to take the previous challenge and to just re-architect it to use this model class idea and uh, use vertex array objects. So I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.